The Summer of Apes continues. We just had Kong X Godzilla. Here we are again with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. It's the continuation of that last New Apes trilogy. This one hoping to start its own thing centuries in the future. I really liked what these apes had cooking last time. So is this a case of monkey see, monkey do? Or is this a case of monkey see, monkey don't waste your time? I don't apologize for the puns. Let's get started with the review. Before I jump into this spoiler-free conversation, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. It's free of charge, and if you like light, loose, fun reviews, I think this is the channel for you, because that's all I do, baby. I brought up the new trilogy in the intro. I really enjoy it. Caesar, his plight, his rise to power, and his eventual death. That is a spoiler, but that movie's been out for a long time now. War of the Planet of the Apes. And I will also say that's my least favorite of the trilogy. I was a bit let down with that one. I was pretty disappointed with the route they went, the, the choices they made. But overall, it's a great trilogy. I really like it. They're kind of sleeper hits every time. Just workhorses, getting things done, staying kind of lower on budget considering the insane amount of spectacle on display. And here we are again with a $160 million, which... How meager, right? $160 million budget, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. These movies certainly have a way with the titles, don't they? They're mouthfuls every time. They're also on the longer side. This one clocks in at two and a half hours. You're going to be spending a lot of time with apes on horseback. Really, you're spending most of your time with one ape, and that's Noah. He's going to be the new main protagonist for this new start of a trilogy. We need to once again pour one out for Caesar. He was the life, he was the energy in these films. And I think Noah's a good character, but he's not quite a great character. And that's the biggest issue I have with this new film. Although it is a spectacle, although it does have state-of-the-art CG, everything looks really good, it does have an all right pace. It's very slow. It takes its time, but it's building to something. It just lacks that extra something special that Caesar brought. It's missing the heart. It's missing the drama element. Now, while it certainly tries, and there definitely are emotional moments, and there's some very intense spots in this film, it never gets even remotely close to what Caesar's family brought to the table. And Caesar's very omnipresent in this movie. He's constantly referenced. The entire plot really revolves around this new king, Proximus Caesar. He's risen to power over the years, he rounds up all the other tribes, and he wants to make everyone bow to him and do his bidding. He will twist and mangle the original Caesar's ideas, apes together strong, not in the way that Proximus preaches it. I like this idea. Proximus Caesar is a cool foe. He's a great adversary. But the movie doesn't go far enough with it, and it's way too late in the game before this character is really fleshed out. We meander too much. We go on too many side quests with Noah, and I think if they would have cut down 20 or so minutes, we would have had a faster moving picture that maybe would have had a bit more drama put in. Also, not really sure why his ape tribe went all in on eagles. <laughs> They're an eagle tribe. At some point when Caesar died, I imagine that hundreds of years ago, one of the apes goes, all right, um, I know we're, this is still fresh. We're burning Caesar's body, but uh, I'm going to go do my own thing over here. I'm really into eagles. I want to make that like our thing. We're going to take eagle eggs and we're going to raise the birds to respect us and we're going to be their leaders and they're going to do our bidding. That's going to be the kind of ape tribe I want. We're eagle apes at the end of the day. Who's with me? And it's just crickets for a while. But then over time, this tribe will grow. And that's the tribe Noah's part of. He's got his eagle king dad, his mom, his friends. And... <laughs> It's just kind of a weird, I mean, whatever, it's fine. There's different, there's different ape tribes. I just thought it was a very interesting pivot from the previous movies. They don't have a big knowledge of Caesar. The name kind of eludes them. All they know of is this Proximus guy. And so Noah's going to learn as the film unfolds what the history is of this character what the ancestors didn't tell them about. Unlike the previous trilogy, this film very much is on the apes. It's basically 90% CG apes running around. There's one human named May that shows up, beautiful actress. She was recently in the Witcher series. Um, arguably too beautiful for what's happening in this movie. She's a survivor human that's a scavenger. She steals, she follows apes and takes what they leave behind. 
She looks really good, though. She's really keeping up with herself. Um, I know it's a Hollywood movie, so the perfect teeth, uh, you know, the perfect skin. That's just with the territory. You don't want to look at someone decrepit and gross. But also, because this movie is very serious, it would be nice if there was a little bit more realism in that aspect. I know, we're, we're talking about a film series where there's apes on horseback, sometimes with guns. So we gotta we gotta suspend disbelief a bit. The beauty aside, this actress does a very good job in this film with what she has to work with. I do think the biggest gripe I have with this, and keep in mind, I enjoyed this film. I know I've been beating around the ape for a while, but I do enjoy this movie. I don't love it. I think it's weaker than the first two apes films of the last trilogy. I do think it's maybe on par, if not a little better than War. And that's only because with War, I was so hyped going in after Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, easily my favorite, that I was just expecting the greatness to continue, and it kind of fell a little flat for me. This one, since it's a new storyline, I don't have those expectations. So I'm watching a very competently made, decent storyline that promises to be more. But a lot of those ideas and secrets are definitely being held for another movie. If you're a fan of this franchise, I definitely would recommend going to this one in theaters. It looks gorgeous, especially on a big IMAX screen. It sounds brilliant. It's just a visually stunning film that the theater still would be the best place to watch. I know home theater systems are amazing now, but it's really hard to compete with an RPX screening. If you didn't care for the last trilogy with Caesar, I can't imagine this one's gonna do a single thing for you. I do think it's lacking in some of the departments that those previous ones really excelled in, mainly the emotion mainly the connection you had for that character, and even with his friends. This one's not completely missing either. There is emotion, there is some really, really intense moments. There's two or three sections of the film where I was like cramped up going, holy crap, let's go, let's do this. But overall, a very solid, competently made movie that you can get through, has a bit of pacing issues, but yeah, not a bad time at the theater, and certainly, a spectacle to behold. All right, those are my thoughts on Kingdom of the Planet of the Rise of the Fall of the Dawn of the War of the Planet of the Apes. Let me know your thoughts. Please comment below if you saw the movie. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Like this video, subscribe. I do very loose conversations. I have a good time talking to you about movies. Hopefully you see that and you stick around. If you really like what I'm doing, I started a second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I rant about very very first world problem stuff like not getting a straw in a bag when you order something from the drive through to people being on their phones loudly without putting headphones in. Is it that hard, people? We're living in a society. So if you like that kind of thing, please check out that channel. And if you really like what I'm doing, highly recommend joining Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Bunch of different tiers over there. Tons of exclusive videos. If you really like what I'm doing, that's the way to support the channel. All right. Hopefully I'll see you next time.